The Brooks Catamount 2 was one of my all time favorite trail shoes. What's new with version three? And does it maintain its spot on my all time list? Hello, this is Mike P from Road Trail Run, and today I'll be bringing you my full video review of the Brooks Catamount 3. The Catamount 2 was one of my favorite shoes. I loved this shoe right away as soon as I first put it on my foot. This shoe I found to be extremely versatile. Fast 50Ks, training miles, even a 24 hour race. Great for any type of running. I just simply loved it. So, like any of you out there that have a model that you just absolutely love. I was a little bit unsure what to expect with version 3. I was hoping they didn't screw anything up. The Catamount 3 comes in at 32 millimeters under the heel and 26 under the forefoot for a 6 millimeter drop. Spec weight is 9.4 ounces, 266 grams. My US size 10.0 comes in at 9.5 ounces. That's 268 grams. That's a 0.3 ounce 10 gram weight drop from version 2 in my US 10. The Catamount 3 retails for $170 and it's available now. Essentially, you have a 0.3 ounce weight drop from version 2 to version 3. Where did that weight go and what's changed in version 3? First impression when trying on the shoe, I took it out of the box, looked at it. Oh no, what's going on here? Did they narrow this toe box? One of my favorite parts of version 2 was a nice, broad, spacious toe box. When I took this out of the box, I looked at it and my heart sank a little bit. I thought maybe they reverted to the more pointy toe box of version one, which really didn't work for me. Once I slid them on my foot though, I realized that it was only pretty much a visual impression. If you see in this toe box, this kind of yellow overlay over the toe box, it kind of gives the impression of a pointiness, but it's really not pointiness. Side by side with version two, the toe box and the shape of the upper is exactly the same. So version two worked for you and it's perfect for your foot as it was for mine. Version three, I assure you, is exactly the same. Now, like I said, we did lose 10 grams from version two to version three. So what are the changes here? Where did that come from? The midsole and the outsole remain unchanged from version two to version three. That just leaves the upper. So the upper has been slightly updated. The mesh is a little bit less of that scratchy mesh. Version two had a little bit of a scratchy kind of a feel to it. This looks to be engineered a little bit smoother. Another thing, the lace loop for the gator is gone in the front. That's a little bit of a disappointment. Actually in version two, the lace loop was pretty tiny, which was a little bit odd. But in the rear, they did lose the Velcro gator attachment. This is something that I actually did use in my races. Typically, Brooks has been one of the brands that always has that in their trail shoes, and I really like that. So it's a little bit of a bummer to lose that here. Perhaps that contributed to the 10 gram weight loss. But other than that, the shape of the upper is pretty much the same. Nice wide forefoot, tapering, but rounded in the front. Again, what I like in a shoe here, this taper along the lateral edge is really rounded out. Nothing that just comes to a sharp point. So this really works for my foot. Plenty of space. I'm sized up in a US 10. My true to size is a 9.5, but I find that if I can get a nice secure fit in a shoe going a half size up and it gives me that little maybe quarter of an inch in front of the toes, I really like to go that route, especially if I consider a shoe an ultra distant shoe. And I ran version two for 24 hours last year. So definitely I wanted to have that kind of little space in version three. And I think if you're kind of in between going up that half size, especially if you're a lighter runner and you look at maybe you want to take these for a long ultra distance, then I would probably recommend going up a half size if you have a narrower foot or you prefer running in very thin socks you could also stick with your true to size in these i could actually probably go 9.5 true to size for me in these maybe with a thinner sock probably be just fine for shorter distances in training moving around the upper here we have a nice height on the ankle and heel collar here regular mesh padding in here nothing to write home about works just fine other trail shoe models take note you don't need a lot here you just need a little bit of padding not too high not too rigid and it just works the heel counter semi-rigid a little more support here it's a great heel cup no issues with heel hold in this shoe your heel sits a little bit deeper in here so you really do have a cup coming around the edge of this ankle collar and the top of this heel collar again this is nice and soft nice and smooth 
no hard or stiff ridges anywhere just perfect as you see in the midsole you have these little wings here i guess this they put this here to give a little bit of stability to the heel collar maybe integrate that feel through to the midfoot it works well going on the interior we have some underlays in here similar to version 2 they kind of follow this pattern right here slightly different than version 2 but again similar holds the foot very well provides the exact same effect no issues there light gusset on the tongue another thing to mention here look at this tongue how difficult is it to make a nice tongue i don't know maybe perhaps tongue manufacturing is more difficult than i think it is but here you have about at least a quarter inch half inch above the highest row of laces no issues with the tongue sliding down and laces jabbing you in the ankle it's just a regular tongue and it's perfect the laces they did change we have these kind of ribbed laces here I've seen these in some of Nike's super shoes. I think I have a Vaporfly 2 with these kind of laces. They feel like they're a little bit lighter than the ones in version 2. Maybe that saved a gram or two. But these ribs, actually, I find that they hold the knot pretty well. So that's a good upgrade. The midsole remains DNA flash nitrogen infused supercritical EVA. We have 32, 26 millimeters. Six mil drop is just perfect. Very versatile. You don't feel like you're too high up. It's very well balanced. If you look at this shoe, you don't have any big chunk hanging off the back of the heel. If you look at the rear profile, you don't have any super wide chunk under the heel. It's just very even throughout. So I find that gives a nice balanced ride and something that I really enjoy in the shoe. Again, let me just scratch this little dirt over here. We have our Sky Vault plate embedded in the midsole the plate is a flexible plate if you look in these graphics you can see how the design is forked there's you have a little bit more on the medial side and then you have a narrower fork on the lateral side this gives the shoe a good amount of flexibility in all kinds of terrain i find the sky vault plate that's in the catamount probably one of the best plates in a trail shoe because it gives you that flexibility see the flex there's a nice even flex around the forefoot so for me especially as a midfoot forefoot striker i'm kind of landing right over here you don't get that sharp rocker flex right at the front of the toes you get a nice even flex under the ball of the foot and as you saw in the video earlier the lateral flex is really good a lot of times if you have a rigid plate even a lot of the carbon fiber plates one of the issues that they're dealing with is dealing with that lateral stiffness with a carbon fiber plate or any other type of plate yes you're going to get you want that lever propulsion action but when you're trail running you don't want that lever action going left and right as you can see even in hand i could there's a plate in there but i could kind of flex this laterally and again you have a nice wide base here under the ball of the foot. So with a plate in a shoe, I find this is about as much flex as you could ask for. The outsole is Brooks Trail Tack Rubber. Here we have a little bit of the uh, clown puke design, reminiscent of some of Nike's trail shoes in the past. It's on the bottom of the shoe, doesn't bother me. Four millimeter lugs, it gives a nice smooth ride. Four mil's not too deep, so it's not the best shoe for mud, deep traction, things like that. You're not gonna get as much bite as you would with some deeper type of lugs, but it will give you a much smoother ride, especially in flat terrain. Four millimeter is good enough for rocky and mountain terrain, especially given the flex that I mentioned earlier with the plate and the general wide platform that you're running on. You have good ground feel and the four mil lugs I find to be a good match for the rest of the shoe. I found Brooks Trail Tack Rubber to be extremely durable. I've got 251 miles in my version two catamount. So I'm putting this side by side with my version three catamount. And if you look at the profile of these version two lugs, that's 251 miles. Not too much abrasion there. The Catamount 2 has one of my favorite rides in any trail shoe of all time. 
You can go back and read our full multi-tester review on roadtrailrun.com. It was actually one of my highest scoring shoes of all time. Now version three, the ride is exactly the same, totally unchanged. The only difference is slight changes in the upper, a little bit lighter weight, that always helps. The ride, exactly the same. I love a flexible trail shoe. As I mentioned earlier, nice, even flex right around the ball of the foot. Just the perfect spot for me. Laterally and torsionally, just feels like it contours over the terrain when you're running. The nitrogen infused midsole, it's a dynamic responsive ride. It's not on the firm side, but I would say if you're more used to some of the mushier type of softer type of foams, especially higher stack shoes, if you're used to perhaps running in a speed go, things like that, you may feel these run on the firm side. If you're a lightweight runner, I think this hits the sweet spot. For me, it definitely does. <laughs> overly soft nor overly firm. It hits right in the middle, very responsive. It feels like you get a lot back. When you hit the ground, you don't get that sense that that nitrogen infused midsole is really compressing or sapping energy. It just feels like it's giving it right back to you. With a nice wide base, like I said, something that I love. With the responsiveness of the flash midsole, just one of the top rides out there of any trail shoe. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I did a couple races right off the bat in 2023 in my version two. Just love them. But then I had to test some other shoes. I kind of had them on the shelf, 123 miles in one shot for the 24 hour race. That's a lot of mileage to put in the midsole. I kind of had the idea in my head that, oh, maybe they were a little bit worn out. I would take them out once in a while. They still felt fine. When I got these, I had to go AB test back with my version two. And I was actually a little bit surprised at how fresh my version twos felt at 250 plus miles. There was maybe some slight compression around the ball of the foot in the midsole. Again, I'm a midfoot, forefoot striker. So typically in my shoes, that's the part where I'm going to wear out the shoes the most. I get that compression kind of under the balls of the foot and they tend to flatten that area. So a little bit in my version twos, but really not that much. I was actually surprised by how close they felt to the fresh out of the box version threes with those having 250 plus miles in them. That's clearly points for durability. The price is $170, but I don't think that's an issue given the versatility of the shoe. You can take these short, you can take these long. For me, could also be an everyday shoe. I could train in this shoe all day long, especially at 9.5 ounces. It just feels great. I have that flexibility. I'm not worried about twisting an ankle in training. I have enough cushion in training. If I'm just gonna knock out miles day to day, this could also be the perfect shoe. This could truly be a quiver of one. So does the Brooks Catamount version three maintain its spot on my all time top trail running shoe list? Absolutely yes. I just love this shoe. I recommend it to anyone and everyone that asks for a trail shoe, whether they're a beginner, experienced, running longer distances, just training, running super long ultras. I just think everybody could benefit from having a shoe like this in their rotation. Me personally, I'm going to put this one on the shelf. Depending on how my race season shakes out, I'm going to likely save these for racing. And given the durability of version 2, I'm going to use my version 2s as a training shoe and save these for those races. I'll be putting a more thorough list of comps up on our written review website. The shoe is just so versatile. There's a lot of shoes that are comparable across different ranges. Some shoes you could only compare to a narrow subset of other trail shoes. This shoe you could kind of compare to a lot of different shoes. If you have any other specific shoe in mind that you like compared along with any other questions you may have, if you enjoy watching these types of video reviews, Drop a like, leave a comment. Thank you for watching.